Hi, we've had a couple of months in isolation now, months of mostly staying at home to stop the spread of COVID-19, but politicians and business leaders are worrying about the economic impact of social distancing. It's taken us a decade to repay the money given to the banks during the 2008 banking crisis or so I'm told, and it's estimated that it will take 20 years to repay what we've borrowed so far in lockdown. Or to put it another way, I'll be retired by the time that happens, assuming that we don't have a second spike and or another pandemic in the next two decades. And so, officially and unofficially, things have been gradually opening up or unlocking. Some of the school years will be returning today, despite the reservations of teachers that they might be unable to offer an environment conducive to learning and public health. Some shops will reopen in the next couple of weeks with others following afterwards. Despite us having double the new cases per day and over four times the number of deaths now than on the day that we locked down. I can only assume that the difference is that we have built up capacity in the NHS to handle those higher numbers of casualties so that we no longer need to protect the NHS. So some, not surprisingly, have asked me, when are we getting our congregations back in their buildings? Obviously from this weekend, churches in the USA are able to open, with all necessary precautions in place. Attendance by ticket only, social distancing rules observed, face masks recommended, and limited singing. It also means that those in vulnerable categories are still able to attend still, sorry, unable to attend. So, with all that said, I'm still a bit surprised to see how excited some pastors and leaders and ministers in the US are to welcome back some of their flock. Is it a statement about the American Constitution's freedom of religion? Is it a financial reason? Is it the leader's own need to feel their role is still somehow valid? Or is it a genuine desire to care for people and to increase connection. Now here in the UK we're not quite at that stage yet. From today we're able to meet in groups of six outdoors so long as we keep two metres apart. So it's still going to be a while before we'll be meeting in full church gatherings. However, increasingly church leaders in the UK are moving back to recording their live stream services in their church buildings or using their sanctuary as their virtual backdrop on their recordings. The United Reformed Church and the Methodist traditions are non-conformist. From the 1600s and 1700s we've had some sort of flexible church during the time of persecution when reformers used to meet in secret or five miles away from any parish church, often at great risk to themselves. They would be found or not found worshipping woods, in hidden ravines or buildings disguised as homes with escape tunnels. Methodists a hundred years later would meet in small groups called classes to encourage and nurture each other in the faith as their preachers travelled from one community to another. So this coronavirus season for us has not been as challenging as it has been for others from different traditions. We have reached out to each other in the giving and receiving of care, in the contributing and publishing of an extended magazine, in the recording and posting of CDs of worship, music and prayers, and in using video conferencing for business and social meetings, and in so many other ways. And viewing of these videos from my garden on Sundays has averaged twice the attendance at my Sunday services before lockdown, 370 hours, 6.3 thousand views have been generated. Phone calls, letters, cards, comments and emails have sprung from the videos, some of them very personal and profound, showing that they have been more than religious bubblegum there to entertain bored churchgoers. So why the rush back to our buildings? I don't want to be critical, but rather challenge some thinking. One of the reasons might be that it reinforces the building as a sacred space. Now the early church had no property. Renewal movements in their formation did not own property. 
the teaching of scripture is that we the people of God are his temple the physical space in which he chooses to reside not a building I recognize that we form emotional attachment to places and spaces our own buildings have been witness to many beautiful things they've been a place of encounter breakthrough salvation healing friendship acceptance and celebration people have been married there had their children introduced to the world and said farewell to loved ones there are plaques to those who have died in war donated items from faithful members long since gone and in some places graves these all create a strong attachment to a place but they do not change the theology that it is human beings that carry the presence of the living God not a building rushing back to our buildings also reinforces the clergy laity divide whatever our tradition and teaching on clergy and ordination one of the early conundrums of the church under lockdown was the question of whether people could celebrate communion because only a minister was able to preside and this would or would not be possible depending on who you listened to the united reformed church of which i'm a part thought distance wasn't a barrier to sharing in communion after all we've had home communions that unite us to sunday communion and sunday communion unites all christians everywhere over time and distance normally so why not now Methodism took the view that if some of us cannot receive it due to not having access to computers, we should all refrain and so be united in our shared deprivation. I offered a communion service in addition to my Easter service and you can revisit it here. I'll put the link up. Getting back to our buildings takes the struggle with this question away but in doing so it reinforces that clergy laity divide. We're also guilty of creating a culture that places great expectations on our leaders, our ministers to feed the flock regularly. What this lockdown has done is pushed people to feed themselves. You've used these videos, but it has been abundantly clear that you've also used many, many other excellent, excellent resources also. So, the rush back to our buildings could be saying, enough of all that, let us, the special people with the right qualifications, begin to serve you again with some fine dining that's been prepared by us for you. Maybe. And finally, the push back to our buildings reinforces what we really think is the focus of our mission. What's the mission? Church growth or kingdom impact? Most of us would say kingdom impact, I suspect. For the past umpteen days of lockdown, we've not been able to gather in our buildings, but we've met neighbors we've never met before. We've been delivering food parcels and prescriptions to households in places we've never visited before. We found fresh boldness to invite friends to our online services, and Christians have never been more united. The influence of the kingdom is spreading rush back to the building could be seen as us saying that's all been great folks but our mission is really about us getting these buildings full again for me i won't be rushing back i'll be working from my garden and from my office for a while yet i'll keep getting to know our neighbors delivering food parcels inviting people to join us online and working with christians of all traditions i'll listen to the holy spirit find innovative ways of connecting, even if I can't say it, connecting person to person within the guidelines. See what begins to emerge, and when the time is right, I'll make my way back to our buildings, maybe. So a call to action, comment below. Have I been too harsh? Do you see things differently? I'm hoping so. Has your faith stretched and grown during lockdown? or been challenged and faltered? Could it be both? Are you keen to dive back into every aspect of church in a building life? Or are there elements you'd like to see left in the past? And online communion, something you found helpful and would like more of, or not so much? And finally, 
as usual, a shameless plug. Click the like button or the not like button. Turn the red subscribe button grey, it looks better that way. And hit the bell icon to be notified of the next video. As always folks, stay safe and live love.